And they do believe that by getting rid of freak, they'll, they'll ignite a revolution. But what neither of them have, Sasha, Emma, or any of the friends, is a cultural translator, someone to explain to them the intricacies of this culture, the indigenous culture, in part because they're, they're, it's a blind spot. They really don't understand that there is a difference between living in the United States and living in Tsarist Russia. In the basement of their crowded tenement building, Goldman kept watch as Berkman mixed the explosives. What if anything should go wrong? But then, did not the end justify the means? What if a few should have to perish? The many would be made free. Yes, the end in this case justified the means. Berkman tested his homemade bomb on a remote beach on Staten Island. It failed. He decided to use a gun instead. Goldman wanted to accompany him, but he insisted she remain behind to explain his action to the world. It's Berkman who goes to kill Frick. It's Berkman who is obviously the chosen one. I mean, one senses in Berkman a great desire to be a martyr, to go down that road. This was going to be an act of suicide. In other words, he was a suicide bomber. That's how he envisioned himself. And the idea of this act was that he was going to sacrifice himself. He was going to try to assassinate Frick, again, who, who he saw as um, being a murderer, essentially. Posing as an employment agent for strikebreakers, Berkman gained entrance to Frick's office. He pointed his revolver at Frick's head and fired. The bullet struck Frick in the shoulder. Berkman lunged at Frick, managing to stab him with a sharpened steel file before being dragged away. Frick stopped a deputy sheriff from shooting Berkman. I do not think I will die, he gasped. But whether I do or not, the company will pursue the same policy, and it will win. Berkman is a bit of a klutz. He tries his hands at, you know, making bomb. He can't do it. He gets a revolver. He can't do it either. It's a bit of a radical uh, pulp uh, fiction uh, with very crude elements and great emotions, but very little experience and very little understanding of, of the place and also of the time. Workers had not risen in rebellion, quite the contrary. They were appalled by it. This was an outsider who had come into the middle of that struggle and had managed almost single-handedly, to undermine the support that they had. The workers wanted better wages, um, job security, better working conditions, recognition of their union. In other words, everything the workers wanted were ways in which they could advance in American capitalist society. They wanted a, a fairer America. Uh, Emma Goldman and Alexander Berkman wanted a different America, a different world. Within six months, the homestead strike collapsed. Berkman was sentenced to 22 years. He and Goldman kept her role in the plot against Frick a secret. On a balmy fall day, Berkman began his sentence. All is quiet. What will become of me? I don't know. The future is dark. My hand gropes blindly, hesitantly. I clutch desperately to the thread that still binds me to the living. It seems to unravel in my hands. 
they were united by a great crime. And that is a life uh, a binding event. The world begins in effect with a crime, which leads to the expulsion from paradise and the constant need to return to it somehow. So there are symbolic uh, uh, moments in her life that define almost the whole. Often I wanted to run away, never to see him again. But I was held by something greater than the pain, the memory of his act, for which he alone had paid the price. I realized that to my last breath, it would remain the strongest link in the chain that bound me to him. A year after Homestead, the United States was on the verge of economic collapse. 600 banks closed. 56 railroads went bankrupt. 15,000 companies shut down. And the number of unemployed soared from 800,000 to more than three million. I think the Panic of 1893 is the most important phenomenon in the development of modern American history, and particularly modern American radicalism. The Depression leads to the discovery that industrialization is creating a gap between the rich and the poor, a chasm between the rich and the poor, and that it's very dangerous, and it's very unsafe, and it's very unfair, and it's very unpatriotic. Goldman helped organize mass meetings and hunger demonstrations. On August 21st, 1893, she led a march of a thousand to New York's Union Square, carrying a red banner. Go into the streets where the rich dwell. Ask for work. If they do not give you work, ask for bread. If they do not give you work or bread, then take bread. You want bread? Go and take it. You're starving? Go and take it. Make restaurants feed you. Make bakeries give you food. And she'd been very powerful uh, to the extent that people have been very, very impressed by her oratory and her power. Just 24, Goldman was already recognized as a professional agitator. Her talk of insurrection of doing without government, of encouraging the unemployed to take matters into their own hands, of thousands of workers going door to door demanding food, was terrifying to authorities. She was arrested and charged with inciting to riot. Anarchism is, a, is an immensely exciting, poetic, intoxicating, fantastical idea and so of course she scared the shit out of people I mean you know, and she intended to I think what made her so scary to those people to whom she was scary and probably is exactly what made her appealing to those people who found her appealing which is that she was an incredibly free spirit she's in the public eye she's famous she's notorious She's often referred to as the famous anarchist. She's visible. And th there's something about that that she enjoys, but there's something about that that also is politically important because it's also a way to talk about anarchism. Goldman was sentenced to one year in prison. She used the time to educate herself, reading Emerson, Thoreau and Whitman. She also trained as a nurse. When she was released in the summer of 1894, Goldman was met by a crowd